that. And here's the fascinating part. I'm going to continue on uh, overviewing our uh, ethical standards for congregations. Uh, after today, only four more to go. Okay. Today, I'm going to talk about the church and its relationship with ministers. Um, of course, as you know, the church is in what's called a pastoral search process, looking for for, uh, the next uh, senior minister and uh, we do that by using resources from our denomination and our region uh, which is based in Little Rock and our regional minister has uh, helped our committee by providing them with uh, a list of candidates and uh, so far uh, none of them has run the bell but uh, they'll continue to get candidates until the right person appears. Um, that we will not discriminate for marital status, sex, age, or race. Uh, we'll try to be fair in terms of compensation as to what disciple ministers are being paid in other places. Uh, we'll provide a place to work and reasonable time off and not make excessive demands on ministers' families. We will give freedom of the pulpit to present Christian convictions. We will keep our minister informed when pastoral services are needed and not call on former ministers to provide those services. We will have an active pastoral relations committee to monitor the relationship between our minister and the congregation. And we will get assistance from the regional staff if a conflict situation begins to look like a crisis. And we will have similar appropriate principles with all other professional staff of congregation. Just trying to act ethically. Matthew 5, known as the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, it begins with Jesus seeing the crowds and he goes up on a mountain sits down and disciples come and gather around him and he begins to speak and he taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. In the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It is not a very pleasant time to be a minister because we live in a very contentious society. People have, at least some people, have pretty strong opinions about things. And you can get on the internet and discover a whole bunch of people that exactly agree with you. In fact, some people believe that God hates the same people that they hate. And unfortunately, this kind of causes division among us. And, you know, there's just a lot of areas that just don't go. Where do I go as a minister to, to try to help a congregation deal with living in this society? And indeed, just getting through life. Because all of us have our issues to face different sets of problems and it kind of varies as time goes by but there's always something like Rosanna Rosanna Dennis you know. there's 
always something that's bugging us. Um, you know, Jesus picked out some folks and said, you know, the, the blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those that are persecuted. If you had wandered out on that mountainside to hear this Jesus that you've been hearing good things about that day, and you had wondered, what will he say? And then he begins to say these things, and you kind of wonder, am I in the right place? I mean, Jesus has this utterness about him. He says some things that are just kind of contrary to to worldly wisdom. Lyndon, roll the video. Jesus had access to video, he could have done that. Uh, about 20 years ago, we had a contemporary service in the church that I was serving. It was, it was early, it was nine. And uh, we had a guy that did our, our sound and lights uh, regularly. And he called us up the week before the Super Bowl and says, well, I can't be there uh, this Sunday. Okay, I need to get ready for the Super Bowl. This is, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm missing something because obviously there's other people that are, that are getting ready for the Super Bowl. Uh, I think I'll be adequately ready. Uh, it's a temptation to take all your hopes and dreams for all good things kind of roll them up into a ball and call that Jesus. But the Jesus we encounter in Scripture sometimes really challenges us. He had this other quality about him that it's hard to know what to expect he might do and say next. The world says it's best if we are rich and popular and powerful. But Jesus, instead of focusing on pride and self-improvement and gain and temporary happiness, what the world values focus on humility and spirituality and compassion and what he thought it meant to be truly blessed. Our uh, elementary children in Sunday school class, uh, they're learning this song called the Beatitude Song. Um, it kind of restates the Beatitudes another way.
Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who see the sin in their hearts. Blessed are the ones who are weeping, because sin has tore, torn the whole world apart. Blessed are the meek and humble, God will freely give them all things. Blessed are the ones who are hungry and thirst for justice and wait on their king. Blessed are the merciful, whose sins are forgiven, so they can forgive. Blessed are the pure in heart, God will show His face to them. Blessed are the ones who make peace, loving others with the Savior's love. Blessed are those bullied for their faith. Great in God's kingdom will be their reward. These values are kind of upside down in terms of the world that we usually encounter. I wonder how do we make sense of that? Because it's a shocking promise. Because what God is asking us to do is trust God's time. And you kind of fill in the blank for yourself with those blessings of the Beatitudes. Um, some of you may know the writer, Andre Nuon. Uh, he said the difference between optimism and hope is that optimism is when you think things are going to get better eventually. And hope is that God will fulfill God's promises in the way that leads us to true freedom. Much farther beyond what we are optimistic about happening. I ran across a, an article this last week it's called Cancer Killed by Racism. What is this? Um, well, I, you know, well, eventually if it gets you, then you're not racist anymore. But no, that's not what he was saying. He talked about going to Abby Anderson Cancer Center in Houston and first time there, and he's got his x-rays and a file under one hand and files from his doctors at home and, and under the other arm and, and walking around and trying to find his way and noticing all these other people and some of them are are carrying the same things and there's all kinds of people there there's people of many colors and there's people talking different languages and he said you know there's nothing special about being a cancer patient. There's, there's nothing unusual, unfortunately, about being a cancer patient. Because all these people are in the same boat. It doesn't matter if they were wealthy or poor or powerful or weak. All that stuff that the world treasures, it doesn't make any difference. We're just people trying to get a cure for And he talks about how the big man from Alabama with a slow drawl and a beer belly was so patient with him when he was vomiting like he had a demon inside of him. And the nurse that was so kind to bring the heated towels who had bushy eyebrows and olive colored skin he thought maybe from Syria or Egypt. It was just one encounter after another of people who were different than him but who cared for him. And he realized not only are we all in the same boat that we all have an opportunity to lift up new possibilities in our struggles. I got to believe that Everybody who came out to hear Jesus that day had you know, different attitudes and different problems. And some were there to pick what he was going to say apart. And, and some were there to hang on every word. And, and some were there because they were desperate. And they were going to give life another chance. And some were there because they indeed were sick. And I hope this man's healing would be maybe showered on their life. He says, blessed are the pure in heart. 
Blessed are those who weep. Blessed are the meek and humble. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the ones who make peace. Blessed are those who are bullied for their faith. And probably one of those categories pretty well fit everybody that was there. It's kind of a rude world we live in. And a lot of people won't give you a break. And some people will take advantage of you. And some people will try to use you. Being meek seems kind of counterproductive at times. Being a peacemaker seems, whoa, we've got to be strong. You know, the world says God helps them that help themselves. But ultimately, is that going to make you happy? Or give you a sense of fulfillment or peace? God says, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who weep. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the ones who are hungry and thirst for righteousness. This is where we find truth. And Jesus just kind of turns contemporary thinking upside down. This is the power of our Savior. This is where we get the resources to live in a world that not only needs people who care, but who needs people who can care for others. This is our hope to be all of those things. over your love upon our lives. We're sometimes feeling lost and confused and don't know what to do next. Sometimes our steps are hard because we're not sure that we can make them alone. But remind us that you're with us, that you can guide us, that you can lead us. Help us to know a Jesus whose message resounds forever. Not necessarily with the wisdom of the world, but your eternal wisdom. May we be followers of you, doing our best to live out these words in these days.